The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hiya, Casey, Miss Williams. Hello, Hello Ethelbert. How are you? Look at this, a picture of my sister's kid. My married sister, of course. Say, he sure is growing up, Ethelbert. Oh, here comes Tony. Why don't you show it to him? Say, a fine-looking boy, Ethelbert. Yeah, and you know what? Already he can say Uncle Ethelbert. Uncle Ethelbert? Yeah. Well, well. But you know, the day I'll be excited is when he learns to say the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation is a great name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, The Mysterious Lodger. <laughs> About 10 o'clock. In a private office at police headquarters, a telephone rings. A big man in civilian clothes reaches for its receiver and... Homicide Bureau, Captain Logan speaking. Is this the place to report a murder? Uh, it is, lady. I think I got one for you. Who's this speaking? I'm Maggie Myers. To be really proper, I'm Mrs. John Rodney Myers. I'm a widow. Uh, what's the address? 1139 Midland Street. 1139 Midland? That's right. It's my lodger, a lady who rooms with me who's been killed, I think. Well, what makes you think that... Well, you get out here and look through the keyhole of her door like I just did, and you'll see... Now, we'll be there right away, Mrs. Myers. I'll be waiting for you. Goodbye. Sergeant Flanagan. Yes, Captain. Tell the tech squad and the doc to follow us to 1139 Midland Street. Hey, you go with me. Yes, sir. What happened at 1139 Middle Street, huh? Casey. Good morning, Hi, Captain. Captain. What are you two doing here? Well, don't we usually drop in to inquire what's happening in the murder department? And it seems we picked just the right time today. Okay, Miss Williams. You and that lug with the camera follow my car. Come on. <laughs> Logan's car stopped in front of that little cottage, Casey. Mm -hmm. I'll park right behind him. Hey, this is a crummy neighborhood, Annie. Yeah. We're not going to get any front page stuff here. Oh, uh, look. A little old woman just came out of that door. Are you Mrs. Myers? That's me, Maggie Myers. Mrs. John Rodney Myers. Well, I'm Captain Logan, and uh, this is Sergeant Flanagan. How do you do? Uh, pleased to meet you, and come in. You remember, we're in this party too, Logan. Who is this fellow with the picture box? Just a press photographer, Mrs. Myers. Pay no attention to him. Oh, you're here to take pictures of me with your brownie, young man? My brat... <laughs> Definitely, Mrs. Myers, yes? Oh, uh, come in, young man, and make yourself to home. Uh, you and your lady friend both. Oh, and be sure and wipe your feet on the mat. Uh, oh, 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 thank you. Now, where's this lodger of yours whom you think In is the front it? bedroom, just off my parlor here. There. Yeah, the door's locked. It's the only room I rent out. The only room I got to rent, matter of fact. Sergeant, take a squint through this keyhole. See if you see what I've seen. There's only four rooms in this place. Parlor, kitchen, and front and back bedrooms. There's a dame lying on the floor in there, Captain, and I'd say she'd been stabbed. I used to have a nice big house when my husband was alive. Six rooms and bath. Uh, we'll that... break in the door. Uh, hey, who'll pay for that uh, door? We can't think of that now, lady. Uh, together, Flanagan. Yeah. Uh, one push is all a door like that needs. Hey, this dame on the floor is stone cold. Been dead for hours. Look at this knife in her back, Captain. Pushed into the hill. Hold it, everybody. Casey. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. You know you can't take pictures until I say so. Now, all of you keep out of this room. I don't want you stepping on possible evidence. Why, Captain, none of us have come inside that room. You know we know better than that. Uh, when I'm watching you. Poor Miss Patrick. Poor Miss Patrick. Hey, is that the dead woman's name, Mrs. Myers? Yes, Alice Patrick. At least that's what she told me. Such a nice, quiet woman she was. 
And she paid her rent so regular. Uh, I'll want to hear all you know about her very soon. Uh, she's a big girl, about 45. Only a husky guy could have driven that knife so deeply into her back. That was done with one clean stroke, Sarge. Yeah, it took muscle to do that, Captain. You got any idea who was in this room with your lodger last night, Mrs. Myers? No, I haven't, young man. Miss Patrick come home alone about 8 o'clock last night and said good evening, and then she went into her room, and I heard her lock the door. Uh, when did you find that she'd been killed? Well, when it got near 10 o'clock this morning, and her door was still shut, I began to get a little worried. Why? Because I did, that's why. <clears throat> Go on, please. Well, finally I called her, and she didn't answer then I did what any woman would do and look through the keyhole. After that, I run out the corner store where there's a phone and called you. Mm -hmm. This door wasn't only locked on the inside with a key, Logan. It was fastened with a bolt. I told you not to come in here, Casey. I'm only poking my head around the door frame, Logan. The killer never left this room by the door, Captain. That's pretty obvious, Miss Williams. He used that window. Oh, he couldn't have done that, Captain. That window's locked. Mrs. Myers, it's open two inches from the bottom. I say it's locked. I know my own house. Try it. Okay. Say, it is locked in this position. Locked from the inside by them spring bolts in the frame. Miss Patrick always left it like that at night, open enough to get fresh air, but not open enough so as even a cat could get in. Hmm. Somebody stabbed Miss Patrick in a room they couldn't get out of. But how? It's very simple. Oh, it is, huh? Mm-hmm. Can I come into the room, pal? I'll watch my step. No, come on. Oh, thanks. Now, look. This is an old-fashioned type of window without counterweights. To raise or lower the sash, you pull out two spring catches on the side. Yeah. Well, the round spring bolts in the sash snap into holes in the casing and lock when they hit those holes, which can be prevented. Probably to delay discovery of the body, the killer wanted to leave the window as he found it open about two inches. So he, he ran a pair of thin strips or something, maybe, maybe cardboard, between the sash and the casement. Climbed outside, lowered the window, pulled out his strips, and let the spring locks shoot into place. Uh, it could have been done that way easy, Captain. I can see that myself now. Casey, you've just ruined a nice mystery. But who... Who could have been strong enough to drive that dagger into Miss Patrick's back? Uh, step back into your parlor, Mrs. Myers. I want you to tell me all you know about Miss Patrick. Yes, sir. Hey, Sergeant, that sounds like the tech squad outside. Oh, listen to all the klaxons. Yeah. Uh, let them in and uh, have them give that room the works. Yes, sir. Now, Mrs. Myers, uh, how long have you known Miss Patrick? Only two months uh, since she rented my room. She was a very mysterious woman. Mysterious? Mysterious, Captain. Mysterious. Now, to sum up what you've been saying, Mrs. Myers, this woman, Alice Patrick, answered an advertisement you put in the paper. Yes, and you... sir. It said, refined lady has pleasant furnished room to rent an own uh, home. That's beside the point. I decided to take a lodger, Captain. Not so much because I needed the money, though I could use it, of course, as because I get kind of lonesome. And I figured having another woman uh, in the we've house... We've gone over that. The point, Mrs. Myers, is that this woman never told you anything about herself. That's and... why I say she was mysterious, Captain. Most women do tell things. Women like to talk. I see that. And another thing, she never went out of the house without leaving her suitcase locked. How did you discover that? How do you suppose I discovered it? Sergeant Flanagan. Sergeant. Yes, sir? Uh, bring that suitcase here if the tech men are finished with it. Okay, Captain. I was just coming out for you. The doctor would like to have you in there for a minute. All right. Hey, excuse me, Mrs. Myers. I'll be right back, Casey. Say, uh, Mrs. Myers, whose picture is this on the wall? This, this beautiful woman. Believe it or not, Mr. Casey, that was me 50 years ago. <laughs> you know, I figured it was. Honest? Yeah. Now I'm all wrinkled and shrunk up. Oh, no, indeed. Your face still has the nice lines of the girls in this picture. Oh, you're just kidding. But it's nice of you to do it. Oh, really? I'm not kidding. My husband, John, used to say pretty things like that. John's been dead now for 14 years. Tell us about yourself and your husband, Mrs. Myers. Well, I probably don't look like much to you now, but John and me was once somebody's. Oh, who? 
You never heard of Maggie Garland? Uh, well, no, no, I... Oh, of course you didn't. Maggie Garland was my stage name back in your grandfather's day. You were an actress, eh? Dramatic soubrette. I wasn't a very good one, I guess, but I looked real good in tights. Uh, my husband was a real soap nobody, though. What'd he do? John Rodney Myers was educated. He wrote a book. A book, yeah? yeah? About historical things. There's the book he wrote on my table. May I look at it? Yes, but handle it careful. It's old and not very strong, like me. <laughs> well, I'll be careful. Let me see, Casey. Hmm. Arms and armor of the Middle Ages. Oh, he was an authority on such things. Colleges and museums used to ask for his opinion. He knew all about battle axes and swords, and newspapers and magazines used to mention his name, and mine, too. Uh, you might mention that when you write your piece, young woman. I will, Mrs. Myers. It's very interesting. Oh, here's that dratted captain back again. Uh, Mrs. Myers. Don't you know of any big or very strong people who are associated with Miss Patrick? Well, I don't know if you'd call my next-door neighbor associated with her, but I know he's been bothering her. How was he bothering her? Well, Sam Mulvey will bother anything that wears skirts, especially when he's drunk. Yeah, the guy's a wolf, huh? Sam Mulvey's what I call a masher. <laughs> it made Lena Glashheim a mad as all get out when Sam took a shine to Miss Patrick. Mm -hmm. What was uh, uh, Lena Glashheimer mad about? She was jealous. She wants to marry Sam Mulvey. <laughs> You're finally telling me something that may help my investigation. Have you looked into a suitcase yet? No, but I've got it here. Also the key. My man found it in the dead woman's purse. Let's open it up. Yeah, I am. Hmm. Only a few papers in there. Uh, we'll see what they're... Casey. Hey, I've seen papers like that one before. It's a parolee's discharge from Avon Prison. The name of Alice Patrick Ives. Alice Ives? Say, she's the dame who oh, murdered I that... Oh, I know. The parole board let her out last fall after she'd served 20 years of a life sentence. What, what are you saying? Miss Patrick, my lodger, was a murderess? I bet she was. She carved up a guy named Clem Shirley, who was a big-time rum runner back in Prohibition days, Mrs. Myers. And now she's been killed with a knife. Oh, Casey, this is finally beginning to look like front page. I'll say it is. We can resurrect the whole story of the Shirley murder, Alice Ives' trial, her 20 years in prison, everything. I never would have dreamed... Now I can imagine why she was afraid of that man. The man? What man? The mysterious oh, man. Oh, Mrs. Myers. Lady, will you please talk straight? She told me if this man ever came to the house, I was to say she didn't live here. She described him to me. And one day he did come. I seen him watching the house. And when I told her, she liked to die of fright. Now you tell me about this. Well, you didn't ask me about the mysterious man before. Oh. Of course, now, I figure he was a detective who was watching her. Mrs. Myers, let me figure uh, it. Hold it, pal. Wait a minute. Mrs. Myers, will you describe the mysterious man to us? Of course I will, boy. He was a big, gray-haired fellow with, with a little black mustache oh, and a long scar on his left cheek. A scar? Well, she's described Pete Shirley. The brother of the rat that Alice Ives killed. He's paid that dame off for knifing his brother. Oh, Casey, this will be a story. And you'll be in it, too, Mrs. Myers, as the star witness. Put on your hat and coat, Mrs. Myers. We're going to headquarters where you can look at Pete Shirley's picture. And if you identify him, this case will be all washed up. That's the picture of the man I saw, Captain. The man Miss Patrick was afraid of. Sergeant Flanagan, get out a pickup order on Scarface Pete Shirley. Have him brought in here and quick. Yes, sir. Boys, we've got Pete Shirley, Captain. Swell, Sergeant. Hey, that's quick work, Flanagan. Any trouble, Bob? Yeah, bring him in here. I don't think you'll like him in your private office the way he is, Captain. What do you mean? Well, Pete is shot up pretty bad. He's dead. Dead? Dead. He got killed trying to pull a hold up last night, Captain. And he was pulling that hold up over in Woodsfield at the very time Alice Ives was being stabbed here. You... You're sure? The boys just brought him into the morgue, sir. There goes my case against Pete Shirley. And my beautifully corny story about a brother's revenge. Hmm. The death of Mrs. Myers Lodger is becoming a mystery after all. <laughs> Oh, 
A few nights ago, I had dinner with a friend whose wife is one of the best cooks I know, and I asked her if she used Fire King oven glass. Well, she said she did, and then she continued, You know, Tony, I find the most important thing about Fire King oven glass is that it practically ensures results because it bakes foods quickly, evenly, and all the way through. Well, then I asked, Well, tell me, how about the fact that Fire King oven glass saves so much time in the kitchen? And she said... Well, that's mighty important, too. Why, Fire King oven glass cuts my dishwashing time by a full two-thirds because I use the same casserole or baking dish to bake and serve foods and to store leftovers. Well, that just about sums up the story of Fire King oven glass in the opinion of one of the best cooks in the world. But here are some other facts to remember. Each piece of Fire King oven glass is guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. Each piece is incredibly low in price, and you'll find a wide selection at your favorite chain, variety, hardware, or department store. Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. got one of those drinking pelicans back at the bar now and I don't want any more. I'm sorry, try me again sometime. I always hate to turn them salesmen down, Casey, but as my sister Edna says, quote, them as buys everything from everybody pretty soon ain't able to buy nothing from nobody. Hmm, unquote. Uh, y- yeah. Uh, besides, my neck gets tired watching the darn thing. Now, what was we talking about before that guy come in? I wasn't talking about anything, Ethelbert. I was sitting here quietly trying to dope out the fifth race. Drinking pelicans. What, in the fifth? Oh, what are you oh, oh now about? I remember that old Mrs. Myers, the star witness in that Alice Patrick Ives murder. She's quite a character, according to the stories you've been writing, Miss Williams. She is quite a character, Ethelbert. Hmm. The poor little thing, she's been terribly lonely. All this excitement, her picture in the paper, cops around the place, neighbors dropping in to hear her talk. You know it's given her a new lease on life. <laughs> you know, she's a cute old gal. You talk your ear off, she gets the chance, but you can't help but like her. Yeah, sounds like my sister. You know, Casey, she talks all the time. Yeah. She's the one that's not married. Yeah. <laughs> Say, uh, what's new on the murder of that Alice Patrick Ives dame? Um... Ethelbert, you read the Express, don't you? Oh, I mean inside stuff. Oh. No, not a thing, Ethelbert. The only case Logan had blew up when it was proven that Pete Shirley couldn't have done the job. Well, how about that neighbor, the big guy who tried to make a play for the dead gal? Before she was dead, I mean. Sam Mulvey? Yeah. Well, Logan's still suspicious of him, but Mulvey didn't have sufficient motive for my dough. He's notorious in the neighborhood for a nasty temper, Casey, and he's a heavy drinker. Yeah. Also, he's more than strong enough to have driven a knife through that woman's body. Yeah. I wonder why the handle of that knife was roughened at the end. Roughened? Yeah. Like somebody had run a coarse file across it. Well, it wasn't a new knife. Probably been kicked around in a workshop or somebody's kitchen. I guess so. No luck in tracing the knife, huh? No, not a bit. The Ives dame was in prison a long time. Uh, Don't you figure she might have made an enemy there who bumped her off? Well, Logan's checking on that theory, pal. You know, that that window being locked two inches from the bottom, that bothers me. Well, now, why? Well, why should the killer take the time to do that? Nobody was likely to notice whether that window was closed or open. But after the killer made his getaway, it didn't matter. There was no darn reason for that window. Hey, there's always a reason for everything. Hmm? Excuse me, Annie. I'll see you later. Where are you going? I'm going to take a walk and think. Come in, Mr. Casey. I'm delighted to see you. Thanks, Mrs. Myers. And be sure and wipe your feet on the mat. (laughs) Yes, I I remember. Uh, Come in the parlor and sit, if you don't mind the must. Some of my neighbors was in, and they wanted to hear firsthand about poor Miss Patrick. 
They just left, and I ain't had time to clear up the tea things we used. Oh, can I give you a cup of tea? A tea? Oh, no, thank you. No, oh, it thank won't you. take but a minute. The uh, tea uh, just isn't my dish. I'll make you coffee. Uh, I can get along without coffee, too. Oh, young fella, I haven't got anything else. Uh, Mrs. Myers, I came here for a talk, not a drink. Oh, that's fine. I like to talk. Do you? You like to have people want to talk to you, Oh, too, I guess right? everybody wants that. Yes, especially persons who were once uh, somebody, as you were. Oh, I was never much. Just an actress without much talent, but my husband was really the somebody. Yeah, indeed he was. I stopped at the public library this afternoon and looked over his book, Arms and Armor of the Middle Ages. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. I'm afraid it was a little over my head, It though. was interesting, don't you think? Yes, it, uh, it gave me an idea. I guess it gave you one, too. What? I don't know what you mean. You killed Alice Patrick Ives. Of course you're joking. No. No, Mrs. Myers. Young man, I weigh just 91 pounds in my heaviest coat and winter galoshes. Are you saying I drove a knife completely through that big woman? Uh Uh-huh. And you did it from outside of her locked window. How could I do that? With one of the medieval weapons your husband wrote about, the kind he says could throw an arrow or a spear or a knife with accuracy, silence, and great force. The window was open two inches. The knife was shot through that opening. Mm -hmm. You figured you were creating really a, a great mystery, huh? A woman stabbed in the back in a completely locked room. That appeal to the dramatic instinct an actress never loses. You're pretty smart, young man. You know, I never figured that window could be shut and locked from the outside the way you said. You kind of spoiled the mystery. You admit you killed Miss Patrick. Oh, of course I don't. I'm just talking. It's nice to talk, even on a crazy subject. Why, in your opinion, did I kill that woman? Well, I guess in order to get attention... Hmm? The attention you've been without for years. Oh, I have been very lonesome. I've wanted folks to notice me again, but do you think that's a good enough motive for what you say I've done? Well, it wouldn't have been for you if you hadn't learned your mysterious lodger was a freed murderess. After you found that out, probably by getting into the locked suitcase and seeing her parole papers, you considered her life of no value at all. She was a bad woman. I went to the library and got old newspapers and read up about her case. And that's how you found out about Scarface Pete Shirley, the brother of the guy she killed. Mm -hmm. I even come across some pictures of him. He never came here looking for Miss Patrick, as you said. No, but that seemed a good story to tell the cops. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I guess you're ready now to tell the true story to the cops, Mrs. Meyer. There ain't been much in the papers about me during the last couple of days... And next week, there wouldn't be anything, maybe. And folks would stop calling on me, and I'd be alone again. By me telling the cops, I won't be forgotten so quick. And you'll put more pictures of me in the paper, son? Yes, indeed. We'll go down to headquarters right now. Darn good idea you've given me, young fella. I'll get my coat. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Uh, What? What do you mean... I've given you a good idea. You understand English, don't you? Say, look here, wait a minute. Am I wrong about this? Did you kill that woman? <laughs> For all your smartness, you don't know a thing. I, I well, don't... Well, do you? No, I... I'll get my coat and bonnet. Say, Miss, Mrs. Myers, if you're, if you're not really guilty, if you're going to confess to something you didn't do... Hey, hey wait a minute, you can't do that. I can't hear you. I say you can't do that. I couldn't do. What's that in your hands? The thing that killed Miss Patrick. But you you got it pointed at me. That's right. I'm going to let you have it now. There's nothing I can do to stop you, I guess. Of course there ain't. Here, take the darn things out of my hands. What? It's heavy. Uh, oh, you're... <laughs> you're... Letting me have it. It's I, I the see. evidence you needed. You didn't have none before. Mrs. Myers, I... <laughs> Fooled you, didn't I? Uh, y- yeah, you sure did. <laughs> I can fool folks right away. Bet I get you guessing again before we're through. <laughs> The 
Surveys show that housewives, almost without exception, prefer to buy foods and other household products packed in glass containers. Their reasons are many and varied, but chief among them are five important facts. One, glass containers have no effect on the taste of the food they contain. Two, glass containers let you see exactly what you buy before you buy it. Three, glass containers are so attractive that condiments can be served on the table in the original container. Four, glass containers are easy to open. And five, glass containers can be safely resealed to store leftovers. The better brands of foods are again available in clean, sparkling glass containers. Most of them in anchor glass containers protected by anchor vacuum caps. Both products of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. What, uh, what was the gadget Mrs. Myers had that shoots knives, Casey? It was an old crossbow, Ethelbert. Crossbow? That's right. It's not like the longbows used by Robin Hood and the American Indians. Well, the principle is the same, but it's different, Annie. See, this gimmick is a short bow set across a hunk of wood that looks like a rifle stock. It was made to shoot short arrows, or, or bolts, as they were called. The thing is an antique that Mrs. Meyer's husband picked up someplace. I see. Poor old lady. So lonesome she committed murder to get attention. What'll be done with her? She's in an institution, Ethelbert, where she'll be perfectly happy because attention is something she's sure to get for the rest of her life. Out of her mind, huh? Yeah, so the docs say, in the legal definition. Poor old lady. Think of the poor doctors and nurses. I wonder what you'll pull on them. Annie, I... I wish I was sure of what she's already pulled. What do you mean? I'm never going to be sure that she used that crossbow. That, that she really is a murderess. I'll never be sure that she hasn't played me for a chump to get what she wanted. The death of the mysterious lodger is still a mystery, maybe? Ethelbert, I don't think so, but... Oh, nuts. Let's see what's good in the fifth. Give me that thing. <laughs> Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation. A great name in glass. Crime Photographer is directed by John Deeks. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Leslie Woods as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. The part of Maggie Myers was played by Miss Eva Condon. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. The Red Cross carries on for veterans, for military hospitals, and for all communities in time of disaster. You can help by giving generously now. And this is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, the world's largest maker of household glass. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>